he uh, just want to talk a little bit about this engine after you've seen the uh, the force tank of the break in for it. It's a uh, new to me molar. This is a uh, Norval Big Meg 0.061 cubic inches of displacement. It's a half A, so it's pretty little. Um, but wow, this thing performs. It, it's blowing me away. I, I've never broken an airplane engine that's like this before. It's got an incredible amount of top end pinch. Uh, it, the only thing I can compare it to is like an RC car engine. I've all the airplane air engines I've had experience with. I, I haven't done pylon racing or anything like that, but like most of the standard stuff, nothing, no comparison. <laughs> it, the uh, that was tank four, uh, of four ounce tanks, and uh, the first two, I'll tell you, that was a struggle to get through. Um, but we did it, and uh, at about tank three, so this would be probably about after about half an hour, hour runtime, it started to really smooth out nice, hold a good steady note. It likes to run a touch on the rich end, I don't know, I'll play around with that a little bit later, but. Um, and then this is my kind of glow plug arrangement for breaking in these half A engines. The, they have kind of, there's a couple versions out there for the glow heads. There's the integrated one, there's this one, there's the button style, there's the insert style. I, I like this for breaking stuff in just because there's, uh, there, there's some wearing in happening. So there's some, you know, debris that's flying around and can foul plugs and things are running a bit rich and you get carbon buildup and all this stuff. And you can get this anywhere. All the other stuff is kind of hard to find these days. And if you can find it, it's quite expensive. So I, I tend to only use that stuff um, for uh, actually flying and things of that nature. But I don't know, this works for me. I'm not trying to sway you. That's just my basis for why I'm using this. Um, super duper blown away like 17,500 rpm on a five by three rubber ducky kind of prop and uh it's running on 15 percent nitro we're a kilometer above sea level um that fuels a decade old but it was stored properly and it runs really good so i, I can't even imagine what this thing would be like on 25 percent nitro like a fresh bottle like and maybe with the stiff APC five by three, like uh, it would be insane, but this is good enough for me. 17,000 ripums is plenty. <laughs> it's gonna rip. I'm gonna throw it on this. Uh, this is a Carl Goldberg design. It's a control line. Um, I would call it a little Satan. I think it's gonna rip really good. This is motor number three for this. The first two, um, one was had a major flaw in it. The other one vibrated way too bad. Um, but this one, I've got a really good feeling about. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. And yeah, I look forward to getting that in the air. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, there's some stuff with temperature in there. I was just curious more than anything else. I usually just tune this stuff by ear. And um, I, I was kind of wondering like, because this shares a lot of traits with RC car motors, just, you know, obviously it's got to heat up enough so stuff loosens up. And I found at about 180 Fahrenheit, it, this loosens up and there's no, there's none of this rocking motion. You can turn it slow and it flips over. It's kind of 180 Fahrenheit plus. It was good. And it seemed to run really good up to about 220, 230. I didn't really experiment beyond that, but because this isn't the typical like it's not doesn't match the cooling so it's a little bit different uh, again it's aluminum so it wicks heat really good but yeah that's just my observations hope you enjoyed this um feel free to comment if you like watching stuff like this just uh throw me a like or feel free to subscribe and i'll keep bringing it